Welcome to our services of worship at First United Methodist Church of Waukesha on this, the Sunday of Epiphany. I'm Dan Schwerin, one of the ministers at First Church, and I'm delighted that we could gather even virtually for this time of worship. If you're a guest with us, I look forward to meeting you when that's possible. This morning, we were led into our experience of worship with the prelude, We Three Kings. As we follow the Magi this morning, that was played by Tom Ajak on guitar. Our anthem today is the first Noel, a collaboration of the chancel choir and the tower bells under the direction of Greg Carpenter and uh, accompanied by John Schaefer. Today, our prayer will be led by Reverend Hippus. The scripture will be read by Mark Blum. Today, as we anticipate an experience of communion, we invite you to find some bread, some juice, uh, uh, and have it ready for that moment in time that we could be uh, at the table together. And God can use anything, anything that you have around the house, so that we can enjoy and anticipate this time at the table together. We'll be led out of our worship services by John Schaefer as he leads us with a piece of music, Good People All, this Christmas tide. So let's open our hearts for an experience of worship. As we come together in a spirit of prayer, I would invite you to join me after I say, Lord, in your mercy, to respond with, hear our prayer. God of new beginnings, as we begin a new year and long for a different year, we are reminded that you are making all things new. We come to you in prayer with hopes and dreams for the year that lies ahead and a desire to leave behind the pain, loneliness, and grief of 2020. As a star guided the wise men to Jesus, provide the reorienting light we need for the journey ahead. Open our hearts and minds more fully to the Christ in our midst as we lift our prayers to you. God of joyful celebrations, we have so much to be grateful for each day and give thanks for all the basic needs and simple pleasures you provide. Thank you also for significant milestones in life, especially the 90th birthday of Don on Christmas Day and the 50th anniversary of Monty and Quay on December 28th. 
Due to the pandemic, they couldn't celebrate in grand ways, but we pray that they felt surrounded by your love and that of the congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of rest and renewal, we pray for all those completely drained and exhausted from the past year. This, the list is long, but we especially lift before you healthcare workers caring for our physical and mental health, essential workers keeping us stocked with food and other supplies, postal workers and delivery people stretch so thin, especially during the holidays. Parents and teachers constantly adapting while continuing to nurture our children. Scientists developing vaccines and treatments. Defenders of justice tirelessly working to make our world a safer and fairer place. Restaurant and entertainment workers and others whose livelihoods have been impacted severely people struggling with poverty or addiction or abuse that was exacerbated by the pandemic. In this new year, restore energy to their bodies, spirit to their souls, and normalcy to their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for those facing hard things. In addition to those battling COVID-19, we lift to you Diane having bladder surgery on Monday, Frank healing after hip replacement surgery last Thursday, Beverly dealing with a cancer diagnosis, Jim and his family who lost their home in a fire, Dick in hospice, his wife Carolyn, son Mike, daughter Jenny, and their families as Dick transitions from this life into the next. Calm anxious minds and hearts, provide patience and strength, and grant the healing that is possible for bodies, minds, and souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we bring our prayers for those whose lives are burdened by loss or heartache. We pray for Tom's family after the death of his sister Kathy's husband, Randy. Laurel grieving the passing of a close friend, Lauren. The family and friends of Bryant, a 21-year-old who lost his brief battle with COVID-19 and Ella's brother, Philip, and their family after the loss of his youngest son, Michael. As family and friends grieve, surround them with your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of presence, we pray for your church around the globe. Make us instruments of your love in a hurting world. We specifically pray today with other Waukesha congregations for First Baptist Church and their pastor, Reverend Chakravarti Zada, as well as the diverse congregations nested in their building, including Ministerio Hispano, led by Pastor Juan Diego Arquila, the Waukesha Karen Baptist Church, composed primarily of immigrants from Myanmar and led by Pastor Pao Tu, and First Baptist Indian Church, worshiping in Telegu, and led by Reverend Zada. Bless their combined commitment to multicultural mission and ministry in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of nurture and sustenance, we come to you today in communion. Bring us together as brothers and sisters. May we grow individually and communally as disciples of Christ in the year ahead. And bless the bond that connects us in you 
as we bring these prayers to you, O God, along with those that remain unspoken, trusting that you have received them all with mercy and grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning comes from the second chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 12, and it is the story of the visit of the wise men. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has written, been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thank God Christmas wasn't put together by a committee. No offense to committees. I spend much of my life in committees. I've had my bacon saved by multiple committees. Far be it for me to try to talk you into a committee. But in this time of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany, we've been reading and contemplating this period in time with a book, Watch for the Light. And the entry for January 1st by Eberhard Arnold points to this fact, that Christmas wasn't put together by a mass of people who contributed to producing something good. Christmas came together in a world featuring a humanity that seems incapable of coming together for a common good. No, Eberhard says, the mystery of it, the hope of it, is that Christmas arrives as a gift. Hope comes to work with our broken humanity one moment at a time. And the essence of Christmas is that it is here among us as a gift in time. The story this week, the scripture features that line in the text that says, Jesus came in the time of King Herod. As if Herod himself, one of the most brutal rulers who ever walked the planet, held his time in the fist of his iron hand. King Herod, we know, was so paranoid and so bent on holding on to his power that his paranoia required him to, to be suspicious of the people around him and to pit the people around him against each other. King Herod, out of his own suspicious paranoia, killed two of his sons. His own suspicious paranoia led him to take his wife's life. Yes, Christmas came in the time of Herod, but Matthew says Jesus was born in Bethlehem. 
a, a nothing burger of a town full of nobodies, not in the center of power, Jerusalem. So when Matthew says the Magi came from the east, checking out Jerusalem, it takes a little thinking and unpacking. Magi belonged to the priestly class in Persia. And they were a priestly class that featured divination, uh, the, the reading of the sky and the stars to try to discern what was coming next for humanity. And this priestly class uh, 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 that, that practiced divination was a part of the court in Persia. So court to court and, and ruler to ruler, they had access to the other ancient powers of the ancient Near East. And so these, these, these priests, these faithful, made their way not to Bethlehem. They didn't know about Bethlehem. They made their way to Jerusalem to make contact with King Herod. The Magi, Matthew says, came from the east, and they came to Herod. And the, divine, the divination required uh, sort of assumptions that, you know, the bigger the star, the, the bigger the personage, uh, the bigger the, the onset, the, the bigger the impact on humanity. And imagine Herod receiving uh, these priests who said, your job's been eliminated for a baby. The text said, the Magi came to Herod asking, where was the baby born king of the Jews? And everybody at this point takes a deep breath because this is the start of the gospel of Matthew, the start of an understanding, the start of a journey that we're gonna have to choose which will be our king. There's a deep honesty in the text today. When the text says, the Magi came asking, what it means to be human is that we're on this planet with partial knowledge, mortal knowledge. And we, we like the Magi journey forward with a mortal and incomplete knowledge. Some of the most painful moments of our life is we don't know the way forward, should we have the funeral now or wait till after COVID? Will I stay with this workplace even though it is not safe? But the picture that we get of the Magi is that the, the runner sled that greases the way forward in this journey is that a communion of the humble is the way forward. We're on this earth with partial knowledge, and we've got chief priests and scribes. We have the willing and the unwilling in Herod. And there is still hope that the Magi are able to come to Jesus. The Magi are able to move forward because God can use a communion of the humble. What a hope that God can use our partial knowledge to move us forward as a people. In these last days, I have heard two or three conversations on the edges and the snippets in the media about hope. How desperate people are for hope. And it made me wonder about this text and about this time as we start this uh, first Sunday of the new year, the Sunday of Epiphany. How is it you would describe hope? What gives you hope? What brings you a sense of hope? Where do you place your hope, even in this journey of impartial knowledge? Now, I told you a thousand times, I start the day with the Psalms, and one of the blessings of that is, is these, these lines and these snippets come to mind. And so when I thought about the text and, and how do we move forward as a people and in hope, the, the psalm that came to mind was Psalm 146. Put not your trust in princes or mortals 
who cannot save. Put not your trust in princes or mortals who cannot save. This may be a good time to, it, it doesn't matter who, who's your tribe, what your political tribe is. We're in, in between a, a peaceful transition of a, of a fair and free election in the midst of it, that even though Wesley said to participate in the common good, called Methodists, people called Methodists into the common good to participate in the common good. We do not put our trust in princes or in mortals that cannot save. No, our hope is deeper and larger. Our hope was never supposed to be in a tribe because these are partial goods. Parties only contain a partial knowledge. We require the input and the knowledge of the whole community. And then as the, the text reveals to us for the Magi and the people looking over the Magi's shoulder, it is a communion of the humble that is the way forward. Today on this Epiphany Sunday, the first Sunday of the new year, we enjoy a taste of communion. And one of the things that sustains us on this journey forward is that God is making a communion out of our brokenness. And that 2020, as it, as it passes behind us, has a legacy of brokenness. We've, we've experienced profound losses. and We've had great disruptions. We've had economic losses. We've done harm to each other. But God arrives making a communion out of our brokenness as a taste, a foretaste. In the early uh, days of Christianity, the Christian church talked about communion as a taste of God's promises fulfilled, a foretaste of the banquet so that God is making a communion out of our brokenness now, but we are on our way because our journeys end in worship. We who know the story know that the Magi will be on their way uh, to a journey that ends with uh, kneeling, uh, paying homage, uh, offering themselves to God, uh, uh, a place of giftedness, a place of grace and wonder. We have hope because our journeys end in worship. And it's not just the old Greek idea that this too shall pass. It is more. The record of Christian Scripture is that our journeys don't just pass. They end in worship. They end on our knees, regardless of our losses, our hurts, and our hopes. Our journeys end in worship, and we, we follow the Magi with an incomplete and a partial knowledge, with the princes we have, the, the best we can. But our hope is not only that God is making a a communion out of our brokenness. Our hope is that all our journeys, <laughs> this journey too, will end in worship. I was reading my Carroll University newsletter and the, the annual report, and I, I saw an article uh, penned by the chaplain there, Reverend Elizabeth McCord. And I was so grateful she also uh, 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 tried to look at this time in a, in a way that offered hope. And she said that we could all be physicians. And that got my, got my interest. I mean, she said we could all be physicians in, in the sense that we could choose not to be maligners, but we could choose to be menders. And she pointed to the record of Scripture that God calls us in the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah. God, you, the, the, the Word of God uses the word mend. We could mend. As the year unfolds, we could choose to be maligners or we could choose to be menders. I ain't saying stick out your tongue. I'm just saying we could be physicians too. We could be healers too. What a gift it would be to enter the year contributing to the healing because we are people of the great physician. 
we follow the Magi through the journey out of Jerusalem down into Bethlehem. They, they put together knowledge enough to follow one day at a time, and they come into the house, Matthew says, and once inside the house, they see Jesus and Mary. <laughs> And suddenly we are presented, the, the priestly class is presented with a different kind of king. This is not the king anybody expected. This is not a Herod type, a, a type of unilateral power. This is a different kind of king. This is a baby uh, in relationship to a mother. This is a baby who requires a great deal of collaboration around him. This is a, a baby that requires people around to contribute to a shared good, a common good. If you don't attend to the baby, you're sorry because the baby goes off and there's a big mess. But you tend to a sense of collaboration because the baby calls forward our best. A baby calls forward our sharing. A baby calls forward our love. Once inside the house with Jesus, we see that this is a king that calls forward an interdependent good in a way of love. And today we've got the choice between what kind, what kind of kingship we would follow, we would follow the maligner or follow the mender. We know this is a king that will call forth something from us because this, this baby is a king. And the Magi bring gold and frankincense and myrrh, the aromatic spices around burial. Suffering is never far from us. But this Jesus calls forward our best. And I would challenge you as we come forward for communion to consider who God is calling you to be as you enter this year, a maligner or a mender. Because we come forward with hope. It's not just on us that, that, that Christmas and the Christ event is a profound gift. We come with a knowledge and the hope that our journeys end in worship. You think about uh, Jacob on the, on the run from his cheating his brother. He's on the run and he's troubled. And he has this troubled dream about a, a ladder, a, this ladder ascending and descending, angels ascending and descending. And Jacob wakes up and says, surely the Lord was in this place. Our journeys end in worship. Job has the suffering of Job. And he cries out to the whirlwind and hears and sees something from God that, that changes him, that brings him to his knees. And Job ends with that affirmation as he calls out to the whirlwind, I had heard you with a hearing of the ear, but now I see you with my eyes. This journey too will end in worship. And we who suffer the loss and grief of this pandemic and we who face our mortal limits, we know in the psalm uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, there is a place that, that we arrive at. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. This journey too will end in worship. We come and we follow the magi with hope. We don't have to have a complete knowledge. We don't have to have all the right princes in place. But we have the hope that this journey too will end in worship. Thank God. Praise God. I believe this is a kingship that calls forward an interdependent good in a way of love. I believe this journey too will end in worship. I believe that a communion of the humble is our way forward. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. 
you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself a light to the nations. You sent a star as a guide for the wise men to where Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age and through the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. By way of ministry moment this morning, I'm delighted that the mission team is calling us forward in this season to participate in a contactless mission drive. On January 16th, from 9 to 11 on a Saturday morning, we would bring items for our 
partner pathfinders, uh, um, a ministry for homeless youth in Milwaukee, homeless youth and families. We invite you to find the details of what we would bring uh, for that ministry, either on our webpage or in our Monday prayer and announcements. But I hope to see you on January the 16th for that contactless mission. If you'd like to make an offering to First Church this morning, I would remind you that you can find PayPal on our webpage. There's a portal for giving right there on our one of the landing pages, or you can simply drop a check in the mail. And now as we leave this place, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.